Hello agents, Lori Knudsen with your productivity coaching coming uh, to you for some training on just the basic North Star MLS dashboard. And as you can see, here's my dashboard pulled up. It's got my username here. I could log out if I click that. And typically we have a message brought up. I am looking at this on April 17th, 2019, and they are going ahead and um, pushing out some notices for us to look at. And you can either read these as they pop up and you can scroll down and do that and then you can click I've read this or if you want to read it later you can catch it later so I'm going to click I've read this here's a notice about exploring home snap I'm going to read that later and leaving feedback with showing time app I'm going to go ahead and I've read this and uh, then we're down to our screen so just to let you know all of our screens are kind of individually um, designed based on what you want to see on your screen some people use their carts a lot more. I don't tend to use too many in my carts, but um, you can shrink down or shrink up your external links or open them up. And like I said, they could be in a different location. So this is just kind of how I have mine laid out. Uh, if you're new to the North Star MLS, external links are pretty big. And uh, this is where I've got recent visitors to my portals for some searches that I've set up for some buyers and news and alerts are here. My favorite searches are kind of listed in here. So you can get to know your screen a little bit. Your major tabs are across the top here. And we're gonna be talking about this home one, but I'm gonna kind of hover over it and just let you see it. It is very much a duplicate of what is in the external links. If you look over here, when I hover away, here's Instanet, Showing Time, Remind, InfoSparks, Trust Funds, um, RPR, things like that. If you hover over the home button, it will do the same. It will be slightly different order probably, um, but it will be all the same information. There. So there's InfoSparks, RPR, and I'll be putting out video trainings on some of these other ones later. So that's basically to get to your home screen. This is where we're at right here. Um, then there's this search button. And I don't know why that download came in, but here's our search button. Now this is a very important tab and this is where we do most of our realtor searches. This is what we pay for with our North Star MLS. So we are very much using it um, every day as realtors and we'll do a lot within this search, but I'm gonna come back to that. Um, the My Matrix tab is super important. And just for ease, I'm going to let you know that the best button to go in here for now is going to be your My Information. You wanna make sure you fill out your My Information tab completely and notice there's more tabs now. So without getting too prolonged into this, just know that you should go in here if you wanna override anything like say your email, this would be the place to change it. And actually I think I do wanna override mine and I'm gonna put my kw.com. I leave that checked, that overrides what's at the system. You may need to update your office, your email address there, um, so public facing one there or a different email here. It's good to have them both the same um, Street address of your brokerage, etc. And if you do have a tagline So go ahead and fill that out completely. Also fill out the header footer um, It's sort of uh, oh, I should have hit save. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that Okay, now I'm gonna I bet I my information didn't save because I didn't actually save it So let me go back and do that Sorry about that folks, but that's us in live video. All right, save. That will be a whole lot better. You get the changes have been saved. So learn from me, okay? Header and footer. So I do tweak out my header. You can upload a custom banner or you can just select from a different banner image within this button. There's going to be, I'm going to go very fast, a host of banners that you're going to be able to choose from. And it kind of shows you what yours looks like as you preview them. All right, I'm just going to leave it on the one that I have, which is down here at the bottom. I have Minneapolis Skyline, and I could have chose from St. Paul Skyline. I'm going to hit Cancel and just leave mine at the, Saint, the Minneapolis Skyline. You can also insert your photo. Where do you do that? Right here. Mine would say Change Photo. Yours will say Insert Photo. They're giving you the suggestion of this size. Um, go ahead and find one in your computer to bring in there. Make sure it's a professional photo, not your um, maybe one from like casual photo. Make sure it's a good professional photo. Make sure your branding is all um, what you want it to be. These will give you options of what you want to pick. So if I wanted to add my website, I would do that. 
Uh, now I've got it twice because it's already listed there. So perhaps I will list my email. All right. So those are going to be chosen from the uh, first page of options. You can also choose some default colors and such um, or custom colors. And then you want to save. Now you can do a header and then a footer as well. Now what are the differences? So where are these used? The header is at the top of every single printout that I print out from the MLS, um, the North Star MLS, and maybe I'm doing a buyer sheet for um, the customer view for a showing that I'm going to do. I'm going to bring that page with all the details on it and send it or um, print it out and, and give it to the buyer at the showing. I usually do that. I, I sometimes print out every page of every home we're looking at. As we get more digital, uh, I don't know that it is going to come into play so much, but for the printouts, that's what it is. Now I also can have a header, I mean, sorry, a footer. So I can simply check, yes, I want a footer, and there it's going to come into play right there. And I've already got all my information in there, just double checking that these are the points I want in there. Doesn't it build it pretty? And I'm, it's based on this. So if I wanted to take out my website, I would maybe just go to blank or something else. Again, I just use default um, colors. So if you want the footer on the printout as well in the future, then you can put that there. So I'm just going to hit save. Um, and then again, on the header, I neglected to say, again, these, I, these points of here are going to end up right in here. And I have my email twice. Do you see that? And there it is twice. So I'm going to take out one, and I'm just going to maybe do my tagline instead, instead. Helping others is what I do best. So there we go, and I'm going to hit save. So that kind of makes it very nice and branded. So that is your header and footer. CMA cover sheet. This is the information that will land when you do a CMA. So make sure you put your photo in there, and again, your information. Override it with a check mark if you need to change it up. Email signature. Anytime you're emailing out of the North Star MLS, you're going to have your email in here. So make sure you're getting all your data. I have a ton of stuff in there. You don't have to have as much if you don't want. It should at least have maybe your name and realtor and the company you work for. If you want to bring in a picture, use that button there to bring in your picture. Your portal profile, when you set people up on auto searches, this is what they're going to see. So make sure you're going through looking at your photo, putting it in there. A portal greeting, so type a little something. Uh, just say welcome, hi there. I think they give you a default one. You can place a video in there if you'd like. Otherwise, make sure your contact info is in there. So yes, you do have to go in here and update all of these. And since I made no changes, there's no reason to save. So I want you to get into my matrix, my information, and tweak every one of these, um, these five tabs out. Finance is going to be if you want to do a seller's estimated net proceeds or a buyer closing costs, which we often make the lender do, right? So I do use the seller estimated proceeds. I'll let you click on that and investigate it. It's, it's kind of a good one. I do like it. Roster is if you want to look up agents in the office or just an, uh, any agent in the area. Realist tax is a very good tool to use when you're trying to get information on a property that maybe has not been listed yet. Um, unfortunately, I don't have that um, flash player ready to go, so I'm going to get to that on a different, that's a whole nother um, lesson, shall we put. So I'll get a training on that together soon. Let me rake a note on that. Realist. And then stats. This is some nice fast stats that you can use on single family uh, homes or multifamily. And you can go in there and play with it. Add edit is when you have a listing and you want to add some additional photos to it or edit something about the photos, or add your supplements. You're going to go in there. So I'm going to teach that a different day. We're just showing what these tabs are for right now. My main focus on this, um, this video is to show you how to do a home search. So we've done a preview of what your ML, North Star MLS um, home screen looks like and how to do a search. I'm going to show you how I do one. There are many ways to do a search. I'm just going to show you the way I pick and choose to do it. So single family is what I tend to go to often, and I could go to this general or this general. All right, I'm just going to pick this. Now, know if you are looking for waterfront only and you're just looking for houses, all the houses out there that have waterfront, that's a good way to do it. If you wanted to see today's hot sheet, that's a good way to do it. If you wanted to look for open houses, that's a good way to do it. And I encourage you to get in here and play with these and see what they do. 
I'm just going to show you my traditional way of going in and doing a search. So if I have a, um, a buyer who's looking for a home in, let's say, Buffalo, Minnesota, I'm going to click Coming Soon, and I'm going to hold the Control key down and also click Active. And then for me, I will even go do a zip code or a school district or a map search. And just because I want to show you how we can put in Buffalo School District and hover there, choose the one that's brought up for you. That you could do. Um, zip code, pretty self-explanatory. Just fill it in. You won't have to choose it in or, or choose it. You'll just type it in. But map search is kind of interesting. So I'm going to take you to the map search and I'm going to zoom over to Buffalo. This is kind of the area that I work because I do have a, a house that we raised our kids in in Annandale. It's now a lake place. Now I live all the way over here by Circle Pines. But um, So we have both places and I, I merge between the two. I tell you that because I want you to know I kind of know all the way out to that area. So if you ever have any questions, let me know. Um, but if I'm zooming into Buffalo, I like to double click the screen. Click, click will bring me in or I could do a plus. Now I know my buyer wants somewhere in this area and they would go towards Monticello, but they don't want to go south towards Montrose. I choo they're choosing the area, I'm going to follow their wishes. So I have a couple things I could do here and I'm going to be this wide out because it's kind of rule. I could draw a radius, I could draw a square, I could draw a, rec a polygon. Uh, and it's more of a rectangle than a square, by the way. So I like the polygon. Um, it is kind of cool, so I'm going to click that one. So if I want to follow the I-94 corridor, corridor, I click, and then I move my mouse. Do you see? Um, I let go of the click. I just clicked and let go, and then I drag my mouse. Now, she would go all the way into this part of Monticello, and she would go this way out, and then she kind of wants to cut around by County Road 12, and she would take this far out to Buffalo. So we have been looking for a while. And so we're going to capture all this area. And I'm just kind of, I have one, a search already set for her, but I want to go ahead and I'm just going to go right through that lake and pick this as my shape. So when I click out more, you can see that these, all the other houses went away. So that's how I pick a shape. Now the criteria, the map, which we're in right now, and the results, those three tabs stay up here. And they also will be, if I slide my screen up like this, they will be showing up down here after I move off this page. So I'm going to go back to my criteria because all I did was give it a coming soon and an active and a map search. And so I've got 74 matches down here. And that I watched that number. And here we go, map results. And then we're on the criteria right now. 74 matches is more than I want to deal with and more than she wants to deal with, but she wants a townhouse. So that's going to narrow it down to 10, just like that. That's how quick. Now I could have said single family and then picked what type of house if it mattered to her. And then what I want to tell you about this is less is more people. Less information will give you more results. So when I start to narrow down by a list price here, by the way, it's in thousands. So maybe I'll go 100,000 to 200,000, right? or sold price if I was looking at solds, then I'd bring in solds. Um, that's going to limit this a lot more. And so is bedrooms and baths and garage stalls and square footage. Um, if I'm looking at solds, by the way, then I'm going to also take in close date. Let me show you a little bit of what that means in just a second. But I'm going to stay on actives, and I'm going to choose just for the sake of showing you what it does to say, what about everything that's got three plus bedrooms? It went down to five matches. If I were to put in a price, of, I could do 150,000 plus, or I could do 100,000 to 200,000 like that. That's the way you plug it in because it's saying very clearly there that it's in the thousands. I only have one match to show her. Ouch. And I know that's where she wants to be. She currently lives in a house that is going to sell at about 250, but she's trying to downsize. So she might balk at that, so I'll try to go a little higher. Now I've got three matches, and I know because of her kids, she needs to be in a three plus. So that's how quickly I can narrow things, and then I can click the result tab either up above or down here. I'll just go down here because that's where we are, and I can look at them. I can see them on the map. I can flip between here and find out that they're all in Monticello. 
So then I'll click in and look at it a little closer, find out that they're all kind of right within the same area. There might be one on top of another. Well, there's two. Hmm. I wonder where that third one went. Did I miss it? I don't know. It's in there somewhere. It might be just really on top of it. So I could look at that on the um, address there, but I'm just trying to find out where that third one is. Let's go to results and find out. So we've got gateway, gateway, and overlook. So sure enough, one of them is probably covering the other on gateway circle. So if I go ahead and double click in there, eventually it's going to show me two greenhouses. There they are. Look at how tight they are in there. Okay. So just to show you how that can fool you. Um, but I'll look at it on this view. I'm looking at the thumbnail, thumbnail view, and I can look at it on property short. And that way I get to see in the yellow if there's any inspections. But these are the three homes available. So she's got 219 and your built on here was 2018. So those are a newer build. And again, 2018, 209. And then we've got on Overlook Lane, 199. It was built in 2006. So if I wanted to choose to show these to her, I could check them individually. And of course, I could look these over more detailed by clicking on the list number. Let me tell you that first. And that brings up a whole slew of information on this house. I want you to do that. It tells me who the listing agent is and how to contact him. And we're live in the screen. I could click it and get right to his phone or his email. Gives us some nice agent remarks and public remarks. Tells us more information about the home. Shows us on a map that we could look at it again. All these buttons underneath the photo are super important about this home search. This is going to tell me on a map. This is going to show me the supplements for this property. If you need to know the disclosures, anything like the truth and housing, it's going to be in there. This is going to take me to showing time so that I can go ahead and schedule a showing. There'll be another video on that. This will take me to Instanet, which is the fastest way to get in to do an Instanet transaction and fill out the forms. This will take me to down payment resource. Again, more information on these coming trust funds and some of this information like these trust funds and down payment assistance. There's all sorts of information. Let me show you where that is on the home page of our North Star MLS live mortgage payments info sparks just for that area. You could even see the flood status. You can get an RPR. You can just hover over these and start playing in there. You can go to the tax data. All right, so, but let me go back and tell you what if I wanted to um, send her, uh, maybe I'll look at the short property. Oh, let's see. I'll probably do thumbnail view again. I like that view. If I wanted to send her all of them or one of them, you could either check it or check all. And notice that this blew up then in dark blue. If I uncheck it and say none, that kind of goes away. They don't give me options. In other words, you got to check something to get something. So let's send her all of these. And what I would do is I'd probably hit save and save this search so that you don't have to go back and find it. So hit new save search. Give that one a name. So I'm going to say Mon um, Buffalo and Monticello for Wendy. And I'm going to create my or find her in my contacts there. You might need to create a new contact. Then you just go in here, give them the, at least the yellow information has to be filled out and make sure you pick a category that's helpful. Okay, so she's got her information in here. Here's my criteria. I can hit save. That's a really nice way to go. Now, after doing that, I can hit new auto email. This now will send her an email. I'll go ahead and do it. She won't mind uh, to Wendy. And I'm going to CC myself on it and say new search for Monticello and Buffalo townhouse up to 225K. All right. Now I've got a welcome email. I did that in the my information under my matrix way up here. Remember, I did my my information under uh, auto emails. So I've already got my welcome email here. And by the way, you can you can edit it if you wish. Here's some some settings right here. So go ahead and edit it if you wish, including the salutation. And here will be the reoccurring email she will get each time. And I always add on here, be sure to log into your portal 
to see only the new listings because otherwise it sends them everything, right? And then here's my email signature that I created that dumped in there. I could edit it right here if I wanted to. Um, and then I get to do some settings. I'm not going to have you enable concierge mode right now. If When you get a little bit more savvy, you can look at that and come to me for questions on that later or contact Northstar MLS for some videos on that. And then you have choices. Do you want to send it daily, like in the afternoon and the morning, or just pick one or the other? So you'll be able to check these. Or do you want to do it like I do and send it to her ASAP? So as soon as one of those new listings comes in onto the North Star MLS that meet her criteria, she gets an email. So I'm going to hit save, and she's actually going to now be entered into a new saved search uh, emails. She's going to get an auto email every time, including this one here, every time there is a new home for sale that comes up. Now I wanted to show you about criteria, and I wanted to tell you about solds. So if I were searching solds in this area, in this price range, if I don't limit by close date, I'm going to get a lot of matches. If I go to the map, you're going to see 285 matches. So let's show you. Just in that shape that I drew. Now, they're all doubled up on top of each other and whatnot, too. So there's a lot in there. So I'm going to go back to, uh, I'm going to go back up this way, back to criteria. And I am going to limit, it's very important, first of all, that you take out the list price because I really am more concerned about what it's sold at. So I'm going to say sold between 100 and 225. Now granted, I'm actually more interested in the upper level of that, but just for the sake of keeping the information the same, let's go there. And I'm going to keep the bedrooms the same so those kind of things match. And um, the one piece of data I'm going to add here is the close date. So I don't want closings that go all the way back, houses that closed back four, five, ten years ago. I want to go back a max of two years. And I do that for appraisal purposes and really, truly start at one year. And if you get too many, then go to six months. But in rural Minnesota, where I kind of have that place uh, and that marketplace, I might need to go back two years at time. So I'm going to just start at one year back. So I'm going to go 4 slash 17 slash 19 and a plus sign. Because if I say just closed on the date, exact date, I get zero matches. But now I can say plus and I can find out that I am, oop, I said 19, huh, my bad. How about 18 plus? There we go. See how important the data is. I had to go back one year, not today. Um, 27 matches. Now, if I'd have said 17, 2017, I get 50 matches. So if I need that, I would do that. But right now, I'm going to stick with eight, 2018 and forward, April 17th, 2018 and forward. I get 27 matches. Now I could do more digging on square footage that is similar to hers, total baths, maybe even your built. I could dig in a little bit more heavily. And if I wanted to see those 27 results, there they are. Oftentimes, just to give you a fair uh, warning, I will look at it single lined first and I will say, oh, show me 50 of them at a time. Oh. Yeah, because it's more than 25. So I get them all onto one page because I do a lot of this now. My all, my eyeball goes to total square foot, foundation size, your built. Um, and this would be if I was looking at what her house was worth, right? So if I'm doing a market analysis on her house, hers is an older house, um, and it's a townhouse that's not 2018, or it's not a newer build, I might eliminate some of these newer builds and maybe I would have bracketed that in my criteria so let's go back and do that I don't want to compare her house to a brand new build so I would probably go to your build and go 1992 I'd probably take that and bracket it to go to about 2005 and that's being pretty generous right so if her house is built in 1999, I kind of bracketed it that way. And then I've got 19 matches. Now I look at my results. And those were throwing me off. I just didn't want to, when my eye went down to those year builds, I was like, oh, it's 
kind of that game of one of these things is not like the other. And I need it to be more similar. As long as I've got this many options, I can go ahead and do that. Now, hers is not a quad home. So I could have done that with criteria and exnade the um, quad homes. Or I could just go in here and take out the ones that are quad homes with a check mark. And I'm going to go to refine. Okay. Oop, I missed one. Let's go back and get that one. And I'm going to go to refine. Now, with refine, you can either narrow and keep the ones you checked or discard and get rid of the ones you checked. So it all depends which way you want to go. In this case, I'm going to go discard. Okay, or discard, whichever way you want to say. Be sure to go back to actions then so that you can have all these things show up when you click and sort which ones you want to keep. Now, we are up to 15 comparables. If her house were a townhouse and I wanted it to compare this far out, now to be honest, looking at it this way, I would be narrowing down my map. I would choose Buffalo, which where she's located. So I would clear out this map, just hit that little broom, and do your circle. So I clicked on the, the, circle, the circle there, and I'm just going to click, and let's see if I can get it to work. There it goes. And I want to extend that out more. Let's see if I can get it to work. There we go. You do have a little forgiveness with the circle. All right, so there's my new... Uh, if I'm looking at it from a sold perspective, that's my new criteria. I want to narrow in that sold bracket with all of these criteria that I've offered. Again, I really wouldn't have to consider 100,000. I could go much closer to 190,000. And so then I have three matches because I narrowed my pricing. I mean, I just absolutely know her house is worth no less than 190,000. And I could say results. Three matches. Look at my results here. And I didn't really even consider square footage yet. So there might be some additional considerations I'd make. This is kind of fictitional in this case. So um, I just wanted to show you how we go about choosing and doing uh, some comparisons. What I would take it to from here would be going to in creating a CMA based on this because I did some searching on what solds were. Obviously, in this case, I'm looking to not find her a house, but sell her a house. And I just wanted to show you how we can switch that up in criteria by going sold instead of active. And we do this when we're looking for our buyers because we want to make sure if the house that she's looking at, we just want to make sure she's not paying too much for the house. So we want to take it back historically and look at it. So where I would go next with this would be into a competitive market analysis, and that would require me to check all, and I want to show you what shows up down here then. That CMA shows up. That's going to be another video, though. That's enough for today. That's a lot of information to look at. One last thing I want to show you before I let you go regarding just home searches and the um, basic North Star MLS screen is underneath your external links, if you go down here, you're going to see the how-to videos on the YouTube channel. And you don't even have to have your uh, license yet to go into the YouTube channel and watch the videos. So if you were to click on this and wanted to get some pre-education on how North Star MLS works, click in here, but then go to videos. That way you get all the videos and you can actually do a search within there. So if you wanted to search InfoSparks, I think it's one word. Oops. You can do InfoSparks tutorial training or just hit return now and it will bring in all the videos on InfoSparks. And I would say tutorials would be the way to go here. Tut InfoSparks is a wonderful tool and that would be a great way to learn about it. And then you could go up and do another one. And I don't know if they have one for CMAs. Oh, I think I just did all of YouTube. <laughs> so I think we'd have to stay within um, this. So we'll just back out here. You do want to be within North Star. And then you can do InfoSparks. So um, that would be, oh, I'm not actually sure about that. To do your searching within here videos. I'm not sure this isn't searching all of North, uh, all of YouTube. If you wanted to get more specific, you could sort by most popular and such. Oh, here, let's go search here. 
Okay, so now let's go CMA and see if we can find something within North Stars. Let's see if that works. There we go. So here's your search tool. I apologize for that misinformation. So then you can get creating a CMA, how to do a CMA. So if you want to kind of watch that before I even produce it, I recommend you do that. All right, so there's our search tab. Very wonderful. Um, here's our North Star Matrix regular page. If I click over here. So do go in here investigate, learn how to do things, and go ahead and start doing a home search with single family general and fill out your My Matrix My Information. That is my uh, video for today. Thank you.